Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today? I'm awesome, Sauce. What's up, Mr. Nathan Frazier? I'm going to start this episode by saying something, first of all. As business owners, we're painted as selfish. We're painted as greedy. A lot of times you have people on the news talking about how greedy capitalists are and how selfish business owners are and how we're exploiting the working class and we need to redistribute. We, we, we just take, 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 and, and we're destroying the country because we're so selfish. And a lot of business owners fight back against that. They try to say, I'm not selfish. I'm not selfish. I'm providing jobs. I'm doing so much for the community. And you hit me up with notes today saying that we're going to do a show called Get Selfish. Yeah. Thank gods for capitalism. <laughs> so right. what do you mean? Get selfish. Okay. Well, I, I am actually coming at it from a slightly different perspective from that. Um, my whole thing is happiness comes from spending time doing what it is that we want to do. Right. When I wake up in the morning until I go to bed at night, what determines my happiness is if I got to do the shit during the day that I wanted to do, regardless of what that is right? Most of us that are business owners, we're business owners because we have a craft that we really enjoy doing and we have figured out how to get paid to do that craft. And I think that's amazing. There's a lot of people in, in my world and in our world as business owners who are, they're business owners for the first priority of getting the monies. And I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with that. They're just not really my people. What I'm talking about getting selfish with is what you're actually doing with your time and who you're doing that with. Um, for me, really, what it's come down to is, is happiness is doing what I want with my own time. For the 19th way to say it a slightly different way, I want to spend my time doing what it is that I want to do with the people that I want to do it with. And I'm going to align that with the people that need it and can and will pay for it so I can do some of that stuff during my day that generates an income. Kind of a no-brainer, right? A lot of people really get mixed up here in, you know, they're, they're chasing this or they're chasing that because, well, they've got to put food on the table and they're going about it in the wrong way. And it's because they're not selfish. Okay. So... I kind of want to go through that point by point. You said spending time doing the things you want to do with the people that you want to do it with. How do you go about identifying the people that you, especially if you're like a service provider or if you're, uh, if you're a product provider, but you only want to cater to a specific group of people, how do you go about defining for yourself who those people are? How do you go about picking that group out? Well, most of us that are service providers or product creators or content marketers or copywriters or podcast producers, we solve a problem, right? Fundamentally, at the end of the day, the reason people pay us is because we solve a problem. Who is it that you want to solve that problem for or with? Somebody that's a giant pain in the ass or somebody that's really easy to get along with? Somebody who's got, you know, underhanded, under the table, behind the scenes, nefarious reasons for utilizing your services and your product, or somebody that's actually going to have an impact on the world that, you know, is in alignment with what you think is right versus wrong. A lot of people want to help people or who are kind of down and out and downtrodden and, you know, they've been the victim and their life's upside down and they ain't got no monies and all of that. The problem is, is those people can't really use your help right? Mm -hmm. Who is it that you want to serve? I want to serve people that have great impact and do really cool things and don't make me charge a lot of asshole tax, right? I'm not big on struggle bunnies. I'm not big on assholes, right? It's like, I want to work with people that have kind of, you know, it going on upstairs. Okay. So I was dealing with this struggle maybe five years ago before I got deep into marketing and copywriting, I was doing a lot of podcast production and I was 
advertising my, my services in the college newspaper here in town. And I was getting most of my clients that way. I was doing some political podcasts. I was doing some conspiracy theory podcasts. I was doing some comedy podcasts, but I was just not enjoying the people I was working with. It was fun to do the work, but the people were always, oh, can I pay you next week? I can't afford to pay this week. And then it would stack up. I was spending more time. They couldn't pay me what it was worth to actually spend the time doing it. I didn't have enough money to outsource any of the work. Um, and then I took on David's podcast and David Garfinkel, the copywriters podcast, sorry to plug that in the middle of your show, but, um, that, That's right. I love David. Yeah. And, and that was a totally different experience. And David never had a problem coming up with money to buy new microphones. He w- I said, David, you need to get this particular thing to make your audio sound better. He was like, got it. The next day he had it. Every time I've asked him to pay, He's paid right on time. When I asked him for the money for the launch, he paid it right on time. All of a sudden, I realized, hey, there's a different group of podcasters that I really enjoy working with. And since then, I've cut out all of that other group. And I've exclus- I work exclusively with you. I work exclusively with David. I work exclusively with Pradeep. Um, so I, w- I liked doing podcasting. I enjoy having these interviews. I enjoy talking to people. But I really like working with a specific niche of podcasters. Is that kind of what you're talking about? That there's a big market out there, but you have to identify the people in that market that you really want to serve? Yeah, totally. I mean, you, l- let's be real. You could be doing this for porn stars who are all strung out on drugs and they are a nightmare to deal with. And you're still doing the podcast thing, right? But it sucks having to deal with the people that you're doing it with. That's what most people in business are doing. They're doing the cool thing that they can do with the wrong friggin' people and it sucks. Right? I mean, you can't really choose your family, but you can choose how much time you spend with them. <laughs> you can totally choose your partner and and what you do with your time with them. And likewise, you can totally choose your clients and how they are. Right? Like this is it's us first. This is the selfish piece. Figure out who it is you don't want to be around. And don't be around them. So why is it that so many people pursue doing something that they love and get stuck doing it with a bunch of people that they can't stand? Most people just take on any client because they think they need that next client. And I said it earlier, right? No amount of asshole tax ever makes it worth it. If somebody paid you a million dollars to do their podcast and they were the biggest nightmare to deal with and they were never on time and they were always screwing up and they never had the right equipment and they just were difficult to deal with. Cool. At some point in time, that amount of money is not going to be worth dealing with that nonsense. Most of us don't look at our client base from that same perspective. We like them. They're good people. We want to help them, but for some reason, they're a pain in the ass. Awesome. Adjust your focus a little bit and work with people that are awesome to deal with, awesome to hang out with. They've got their shit straightened out. They're totally going in the direction that their life wants to naturally go in and they're easy to be around. It's getting selfish, being able to say no to the wrong people. Okay, so you have this thing that you like doing. You found the people that you want to do it with. What's the next step after that? Do it with them. (laughs) Oh, if only it were that easy. Yep. Yeah. So if you can solve a problem or you can provide a service or you've got a product that helps people do something and you've identified who it is that you want to do that with, you got to get in front of them, right? Somehow, some way they got to know about you. Fastest way to do it is to figure out where they're at and go social currency them, right? You start doing it with a couple people and they really dig it. Pretty soon they're telling other people. Pretty soon those people are telling other people. And then most people eventually luck into somebody who's kind of an influencer and that influencer sends them a little bit of business. Once you've you've gotten to that point, now it's time to get strategic about that and build a couple of alliances, a couple of strategic partners that are serving the marketplace that you want, that knows that they've got the problem that you solve and know that you're the only one that they would send people to. Okay. So let's say you're not at that level yet. Say you've, you've identified who you want to work with. You've identified what problem it is that you want to solve for them. Um, 
how do you go about demonstrating that you can solve that problem for people when you're just breaking into the market? Go find people that are talking about the problem that you solve and engage with them in a non pushy kind of way. Right. It's all about empathy. It's about being a human being. It's about peopling with other people. If you're just getting started out, this is not the area of the spectrum that I focus on. It's simple. It's social currency. Go show up in their world, establish a little bit of presence, create some awareness, and eventually some authority. And you just do that by peopling with people. Okay. And how do you, and this will be my last question on this, how do you go about doing something like that, whether whichever level you're at, without attracting what you called ask holes? How do you provide that social currency or, or that social proof that you know how to do something without people that are just going to take advantage of the fact that you're giving away free information on a Facebook forum? Mm -hmm. Yep. Get really clear on what it is that you want. And in this case, it's the kind of people that you want to do that with and learn how to keep people at arm's length. It's learning how to say no, right? We've done a lot of giving away for free for two years to establish a brand in the marketplace. We've given away a lot to people that aren't really the right fit. I've had to deal with a lot of people that really aren't the right fit. And it's nice and polite, but it's direct and firm. Okay. So that makes me feel good because I know that this is something I deal with still five, five years into my professional uh, venture. And to know that somebody like you is also dealing with this and still deals with it. and um, uh, it's not just, not just me being a total failure on, on not figuring out how to handle this properly. It comes down to being clear with what you want to do for who, and it, and it gets into, um, being nice and, and direct and polite, but being firm. Yeah, I totally get it. This is the 17th direct message you've sent me asking the 17th stupid question and you're not taking any advice. Good luck to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, no, it's, it's hard to do though, especially when you really want to help people out. But at some point in time, you have to say, hey, by taking care of these people who aren't even taking my advice, I'm neglecting time that I could be spending working with people that actually would take the advice and be able to leverage it and make use of it. The, we've said this a bunch on this, on this show not just this episode, but on this show in general, there's the water, 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 right? And the people that go, oh, there's water there. And they take a drink and they go, oh, that's really good. Cool. Is there more water? Yeah. And then you keep talking to those people. The people look at the water and go, where's the water at? And they look at the water again. Where's the water at? And they look at the water again. Where's the water at? <laughs> right? You stop making eye contact. <laughs> right? Yeah, fair enough. All right, Landon, let's go back over this real quick. Let's just cover the three points again on, on uh, how being selfish in your business applies to actually enjoying doing your business. If you get to spend your time doing the thing that you really like doing with people that are really easy to do that with, it turns into happiness, right? It turns into big impact. It turns into satisfaction and fulfillment. And it turns into people getting their problem solved and people impacting their world because now they're problem solved. And that generally turns into money if you've got the stones just to ask. I do this cool thing. I do it with these kind of people. And this is kind of where my prices are at. If that's for you, awesome sauce. If it's not, no worries, right? Spend your time with the people that you want to do your thing with. And, and don't worry about all the people that are out there that you could solve their problem for. Just don't worry about them. Nice. All right, Landon, before we're out of here, where can people go if they want to check out more episodes of the podcast? Salesgorillapodcast.com, bitches. You nailed it. All right, man, we'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Hey, don't forget, I love some of you. I like most of you. And there's a few of you that just can't figure out that what you're looking at is the water. Bye-bye. <laughs> nice.